Welcome to yet another webinar. We have been doing a series of leadership webinars, and this one is Exchange for Media in association with video.ai. And today we have a very interesting topic. Before I uh, move uh, further, I just want to put in a little bit of context to what the conversation is going to be today. You know, uh, programmatic, as we all know, has become a dominating narrative over the last few years in, in domains, not just in media advertising, but across. And if you look at 2022, it is seen as the year in which publishers, if we talk about particularly, should make the best use of programmatic methods. And there are many available. Today, we have a very esteemed panel, people who are immersed, who understand the nuances of this uh, domain with us. And I want to uh, start uh, uh, start introducing them. We have Mr. Bridges Chand Chandela, a senior manager programmatic sales and monetizations times internet. Uh, we have Ms. Kanti Suresh, founder and editor in chief power sports. We have uh, Ms. Rahul Dogra, head tech, digital and new initiatives, daily Excel share. We have Mr. Suheb Hussain, Head Programmatic Sales, Audience and Ad, Ad Operations, TSG Global Private Limited. And uh, we have Mr. Akash Pandey, Lead Publisher Success, Video.ai. And my name is Rohail Amin, Senior Editor at Exchange for Media. Uh, great uh, to have you all here. You know, I just want to start with the only lady on the panel, uh, Kanti, with you. Trying to understand, you know, how programmatic ecosystem has impacted the overall advertisement delivery over the few years. If you can give me a broad sense of that. Well, I think there's been a tremendous impact. You know, initially what uh, the philosophy that was being used was what you call a spray and pray methodology. Where you threw ads and you just prayed that it hit the right people and got the right kind of engagement. What programmatic advertising has done is changed that entire spray and pray focus to target oriented focused approach, right? So it's algorithm based and I'm sure a technical expert will give you more uh, on that. But what this has done is it has changed the expectations of the advertiser and changed the expectations of the viewer as well. So it's a double-edged sword. Uh, the focus now is on ROI, it's return on investment because even, even the advertiser knows that there's something called a programmatic advertising and the publisher can no longer rest on, you know, just throwing ads like the way it used to be done. So I think um, it, it's, it's a change for the better and it's putting everybody on their feet and uh, it's early stages, I think a long way to go. Perfect, early stages. Rajesh, your quick thoughts? So, uh, it's all about programmatic advertising. It's like, uh, getting the higher return on investment specifically. Uh, uh, if you say about advertising, it also reduces overall costing to the basically system. Also, it will help advertisers to uh, basically target correct audience, which basically they want to target. Also, there are some basically, you can say relevant ads to the customers or you can say the users. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, so, Hib, I want to understand from you uh, the kind of impact that we're talking about. How do you see, what kind of impact do you see has happened? Yeah. Actually, thanks, uh, thanks Rohit, for having me in this, uh, for this discussion, and thanks, uh, uh, Exchange for Media. Um, so, see, from a publisher's, uh, publisher's standpoint, uh, you know, what, uh, what, what it has done is uh, it has helped us to build a robust tax tech, tech stack. Right. Um, uh, from day one, we were very clear that you know our inventory will not be sold at at a certain a certain price. So you know what what programmatic does it it helps you to kind of set certain floor prices and command a premium for the inventory that you have, right? Um, especially in India, where you know the programmatic rates are much lower than you know compared to other countries. Uh, here you have the option of setting floor floor prices and not not uh, letting you know cheap demand you know take away your inventory. Right, that's 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 key. That's the number one thing. The second thing is, you know, it also kind of reduces the discrepancy. Uh, if you have to do a when you do a programmatic deal with a direct buyer, uh, it's since it's a server to server, you know, connection, there is no discrepancy in terms of the reporting or in terms of the impression mismatch. So it kind of helps you to kind of cut down on the 
impression wastage on uh, on an ongoing basis and finally uh, the uh, biggest bottleneck for publishers is you know chasing uh, you know for payments and all that which kind of considerably gets reduced uh, and if you're working with the the biggest tech partner in india the payment cycle is just about the three weeks right so it kind of helps you to solve that issue as well so all in all it benefits the publisher in a, uh, in a very uh, big way right absolutely and you know uh, it's not just the publisher in the bigger cities that is you know looking at programmatic even when you go deep down in the tier 2 tier 3 uh, regions you know the impact is uh, seen there and we have uh, rahul here you know to share his perspective uh, rahul uh, how do you see uh, the impact of programmatic uh, on the advertisement delivery overall you know particularly in your case in our case, actually, we have uh, worked with multiple uh, <coughs> public uh, advertisers, agencies, mm -hmm. particularly in the programmatic field. And I have seen actually it is a win-win situation for both the advertisers and the publishers because we are utilizing, we are thus utilizing the space of the advertising part of our work. For example, if we are placing a slot in our website and the programmatic chooses according to the users, for example, if I am I'm to launch a particular uh, car in, in our city, like in Jammu right now. And, uh, and the programmatic chooses the the ads respect, with respect to the audience of that particular region because they are, they want to uh, target the audience. Like uh, in, in our case, uh, Jammu and Kashmir, and like Delhi itself is mostly covering the Jammu and Kashmir and the Ladakh part of our country. Right. So in, in that case, we can say the programmatic is solving a lot of uh, okay it's uh, issues and bottlenecks. Right, right. Akash, coming to you, you have heard the panelists before you, and being uh, having I mean, literally the skin in the game in a in intense way when it comes to this conversation. Uh, how has this ecosystem evolved and got impacted, especially when you talk about advertisement delivery? Uh, so basically, uh, you know, like when we talk about advertisement, if we talk about the traditional form of advertisement, it was only print and all the big advertisers had the access to that sort of advertisement model. And over the period of last four, five years, uh, what we have seen is the change of user adaptation from coming from the print to digital. And this transformation overall has impacted, uh, you know, the entire ecosystem of this, uh, you know, advertiser or the user engagement. So I think how programmatic has impacted uh, or created, you know, a bridge between both the advertisers, the users and the publishers, a very systemized way of targeting the users, the delivery of the advertisements. And this has definitely, you know, also attracted a lot of small scale advertisers which didn't have the budget of you know serving their advertisements on maybe the print scale so on a larger perspective when we talk about programmatic advertisement this has enabled the publisher to take a control of their inventory uh, as we have seen a spike in the coming years of the users coming onto the platform plus it has also enabled the advertisers to be more you know uh, intrinsic about what they are serving and how they are serving and whether the delivery is happening or not. So uh, so definitely from, uh, you know, the delivery perspective, the targeted perspective, and obviously at the bottom line, the revenue perspective, it has all evolved a lot in the past two, three years. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Uh, of course, I think we are just at the beginning of that huge, uh, what do you call it, disruption, uh, yeah. if I may call it. Uh, Kanti, uh, you know, there's also... Uh, what we have seen among publishers is also that they are moving towards a clean website model with less intrusive advertisements. It's no longer the clutter. You will go like you, it seemed like a shopping mall, you know, at times earlier. Um, you know, give me a sense of how do you read this shift towards a more fluid interface for the end user? Uh, what are the dynamics that are shaping this shift? Hey, you know, it's the need of the art. If you, if you understand the behavioral patterns of a digital viewer, he's spoiled for choice. It's not like one of those days where you're sitting in front of your satellite network and that's all you have to watch. He's on the internet. He gets what he wants whenever he wants at any point of time, right? When he's got so much in front of him, the publisher better take care to make sure 
uh, he does everything possible to keep the viewer engaged and loyal to his side. Now you keep throwing ads like we've been used to when we were growing up, sitting and watching all those ads, whether we liked it or not. It's no longer going to work on a digital platform, right? So that's primarily one of the reasons why it's so important. What is the average retention of a digital viewer? I mean, it can range from a couple of seconds, maybe two seconds, and he says, no, I've got something better to do. And then on top of that, he's going to throw all those ads and breaks and all stuff which does not keep him engaged you're going to lose him that's it so mm -hmm. i think that's the primary reason uh for this entire shift in the mindset absolutely absolutely i know i remember when you go on a website and it opens up three more uh, you know windows before you get to where you <laughs> want to go uh british uh, you heard what kanti said how wh what is what are you understanding from the Market, so according yeah. to publishers, they actually want to clean their website because there are lots of intrusive ads right now on the basically from the many Google stacks. So this is all about the user engagement, how basically user is engaging on the page. If the user see multiple ads on the page and definitely he will bounce back. So it will increase our bounce back, bounce rate, increase the uh, basically there will be the latency on the page. It will affect definitely on render rates of the page so it will uh, it will definitely affect the coverage and everything ecpms of the system uh, of a google stack so increasing cpms to increase coverage how basically advertisers bid on the page that's why most of the publishers are trying to reduce intrusive ads rather than basically uh, increasing a, a logical or maybe a native ads which are uh, same type of page you can see right right i want to bring in suheb here you know it's not just aesthetics you know here it's of course strategic you know uh, when you clean have a very minimalist uh, design on your website of course and making it more effective uh, suheb uh, how how far has this gone this shift and i mean how do you see it how do you read this i think it's extremely important uh, especially for uh, media house to have a very clean site uh, right, because there are also some external pressures. Right, today uh, Google has their web core vitals, and they have laid out a set of you know uh, uh, a number of uh, um, you know uh, factors which kind of help you to kind of uh, you know rank better within their search results as well as to get users to to come on board. So there are some external pressures. Ex uh, apart from that, you know, we also feel that. Uh, you know, there are certain, um, like you said, uh, there are certain strategies in place. It's not just a matter of, you know, showing ads to a user. Today, when a user visits your website, you know, there are a couple of things that he needs to do. One is like what Kanti said, you know, the user is extremely impatient. You know, he wants the ad to load within three seconds, I mean, the page to load in three seconds. Uh, right. But if you look at the average load time of a mobile page, it's anywhere between 15 to 19 seconds, which is way too high. So when once the user lands into your web, uh, you know, into your site, uh, the moment you show him an ad, again there is a delay of another five or six seconds, and then you know you give him a consent to fill, right? You you ask him to accept or consent, which takes another three seconds. Then maybe you, he gets to you know uh, see the content that he is uh, he intended to come, right? So all in all, about if you, if you take it's, it's it it works out about what fifteen, not more than fifteen, more than fifteen to twenty seconds for the user to really look at the content. Uh, once he clicks on any uh, any link, right? So this is like a huge lead time, and uh, that's that's something which we need to cut cut down on. And secondly, what what are your priorities? Is is uh, is your objective only to make uh, or monetize only through ads, or also to build a relationship with the user, right? Like for instance, we have a subscription model uh, which we run. So we also intend the user to revisit us because the, the, the user cannot convert the first time that he comes, or or uh, or uh, you know he can't uh, you can't make him to buy a a particular subscription package on the first go, right? You so you have to take small steps, kind of build relationship with these guys. You know, make him register first, and then retarget him. Then you know to uh, notify him about certain updates that that's happened on the site, new articles that have been published, right? So that's an ongoing relationship, and and that's I think that's one of the key reasons that uh, you know the site needs to be clean and uh, effective for 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 any user. Of course, I think you can't let users do so much of homework, you know, and 20 seconds like a lifetime. I mean, nobody has that attention. Uh, Rahul, uh, your quick take on this, uh, the importance of this uh, clean website model uh, yes. in your understanding, yes. what is driving? 
Yes, this def- definitely which is a point of concern for the users actually. For example, ads are actually some, some are actually relevant to the user. For example, if a user is searching for some sports equipments and and a sports related ad is shown to him, that is relevant to him. But if if, if a user is searching for a cricket bats and uh, and we are showing him a ad of a car, that's quite relevant irrelevant for the user. And and sometimes ads are too hard to escape. The user has to wait for three, four seconds, or maybe sometimes ten seconds. So, in that case, we have to think about the users first, and a minimal and a clean website interface is very much important for the user experience. Right, right. Yeah. So, so uh, uh, right, Akash. You know, a lot of publishers that I've spoken to, uh, you know, they maybe are not also there's a uh, kind of an awareness that is needed, you know, to make them understand that, you know, ads can be placed in many ways, you know, this is not the only way. One, where are we, do we really need, uh, are publishers actively seeking, are they getting more aware? How are you uh, kind of pushing this, uh, you know, making them aware, aware that a clean website does not mean a dip in revenue, it can in fact mean more people coming to you? Uh, so, you know, that's an interesting question, first of all. And I think Suheb uh, almost covered the important aspect of having a clean and flawless website. So I'll uh, maybe I'll talk about when all of this started. So, uh, you know, there was a digital movement in 2020 when we saw this spike in the overall viewership of the users spiking from 16 to almost 39%. That was the user adaptation of the, the you know, digital properties. And that's when we realized that, you know, uh, having to having the content to ad ratio is really very important for an advertiser to also, uh, you know, keep on bidding higher and plus also for the users to you know, to retain on the website. And, uh, you know, both the things are simultaneously important from a media house perspective, retaining users on their website is the first primary task and the most important thing. And that can only be uh, happening when there is a flawless ecosystem when the user visits onto the website. So I think uh, in the last two, three years, we have started using the consultative approach where we are more talking about how it impacts both for uh, a media house perspective and both both from an advertiser perspective. Obviously, when there are, you know, very few slots available on the website to showcase the advertisement, you know, the focus for the advertiser becomes really targeted. The spendings also increases. And over the period of time, uh, what what personally we also, you know, go through and have been seeing over the period of months is that, uh, you know, even the publishers are now more focused upon, you know, targeted advertisement rather than just putting up a lot of slots on the website and, you know, serving a lot of uh, advertisement because it definitely you know somehow in make a little uh, things intrusive for the end user and uh, just because now we have seen that you know the overall transformation is happening for the web properties uh, across devices i think uh, i think that's that's a very important thing at the current scenario to have a very clean and uh, flawless website and have a absolutely amazing ui ux right right you know we have also seen uh... People talking about, say, if I talk about editorially, you know, uh, we've spoken about that we could do so much and more if we had a subscription model. And and, uh, and I mean, we, we always blame it on the way the business dynamics works. And that's what why you see a certain content, you know. Uh, uh, Kanti, to you, you know, how do you see the subscription model, you know, uh, uh, getting affected on the uh, web properties? Uh, uh, you know, how do you see that? You know, what, what kind of, uh, what's your take on the model and how will it affect advertisement models on the web properties, uh, if, according to you? See, you know, uh, I'm not too gung-ho about a subscription model, honestly speaking. I, uh, this is now debatable. It's, it's each one's personal experience on their website. What I think is India is a very, very price sensitive market, right? And if you're going to only be using a subscription model, uh, either your content has to be great or your marketing budget has to be splendid for you to be getting that kind of an engagement on your platform. And uh, then maybe, yes, then you could survive purely on a subscription model. And needless to add that we've been reading in the news, some very big OTT platforms, very frankly admitting that, you know, it's been very difficult for them in the Indian market. 
I would go in for a freemium kind of a model, right? A free till you gain that level of loyalty and engagement, which is in itself a huge task on a digital platform. Loyalty on a digital platform is not the same as loyalty that used to exist on a satellite network, right? So I think uh, have a free model, build a revenue stream out of your free model through great programmatic advertising, build on the viewership, build on your traffic and try and monetize that. And then yes, when you have your premium content, your loyal customers would, would not mind paying for it. Personally, I feel India is not ready for a 100% subscription model on a web-based platform. Right, right. Great insights here. I mean, a lot of people sometimes, you know, they bring in the other point. Uh, but of course, great to very valid points made, uh, Kanti. Uh, Bridges, what is your take on, uh, you know, subscription I model? I very much agree with Kanti regarding the Indian uh, thinking because most of the Indians are not uh, likely to pay for uh, generally for content at least so there are many many sites where you can get same type of content on free so there are things uh, for like subscription model is basically you can like you will get uh, loyal users definitely but this is not for india at least and it will take some time or maybe five to six years to gain loyal users who basically buy your content on the basis of, of money so, so it will definitely affect uh, revenues for web because uh, in subscription model uh, publishers can't basically run their ads and many things so it will definitely affect revenue terms Right. So have you heard two people who totally disagree yeah. and have their valid points? And we have right. this fantasy model of the West, which we always look at and say that, look, they have been able to do it. And we this is the next big thing. What is your take on it? And if it all happens in whatever percentage, what will it how will it impact the web properties? In the sure. so, so, so we have a different story here. So we started our subscription journey way back in 2019. Uh, that is uh, our web web uh, you know web articles were put behind the paywall in 2019 but we had our e-paper initially behind the paywall right when we started some six seven years back our e-paper was was uh, always behind the paywall and touch wood, i think it has done exceedingly well uh, especially in the last two years i think the numbers have really grown grown uh, grown ahead uh, let's see there are two things uh, one is uh, uh, we always think that subscription is going to eat into the ad business or the added business is going to, you know, uh, vice, vice versa, right? But you don't have to think that way, right? If you look at, uh, right, like you rightly said, we, we want to ape the Western models. Um, uh, um, always, uh, what we feel is that, you know, the, the ad can, ad business can coexist with the subscription business as well, right? In fact, the ad business becomes even more robust because once you have a loyal user base subscribing for your content, and slowly you try and discover their behavior and their interest. You, are, you can probably personalize, you can also send them personalized content as well as, you know, uh, promotional messages, right? So that can work hand in hand. Now, what does subscription mean? Subscription is access to a certain content. Like Kanti uh, rightly said, you know, you could have a freemium model where certain things you can put behind paywall and certain things you can make it free. Right. So once someone subscribes to something, you are actually giving them access to something that you've blocked. Right. So, uh, so under the circumstance, under the circumstances, currently, if you look at, if you, uh, you know, take up the subscription for uh, the Hindu, you will not see it's an ad free. We, we never promise it, it as an ad free experience. We always say limited ads, limited or, or personal ads. Right. So we have tried to maintain that, uh, that uh, philosophy from day one and saying that the ads will be there, but it'll be in limited quantity. It won't be too intrusive. It'll be more personalized and stuff like that. So what I feel is that it can coexist, right? Even if you take the OTT platforms, like again, one of the panelists said, uh, you know, uh, the leading OTT platform uh, globally, I'm saying Netflix, uh, you know, makes 30% of their revenue from brand deals and brand placements, you know, within their original content, right? So they also have an ad business. It doesn't mean that 100% of the revenue is coming just from subscription. So, so it can coexist is, is what my take is. It can coexist. Uh, Rahul, uh... Your, your, how do you, uh, you heard your panelists before you, uh, yeah, what yeah, is your... actually, I, I've been working on it lately because we were planning of, of our e paper to go on a subscription model, and I've, I've gone through a different paywall system like the like the 
one already discussed the premium one already providing a certain for example we are providing a free version and the paid version but i see some some of the flaws in the subscription model i am not particularly sure about the others but in our case for example we are limited uh, we'll be showing limited ads for example we won't be able to show the native ads and uh, uh, local ads particularly local players will will not be you know, publishing their ad on our model where we are charging users to view an ad so in that case so we will be seeing and uh, i have been searching in the google too and in the internet too i have seen that in certain cases it, the user fall up to 70 to 80% of the user falls after a subscription model if there is a for example and that's a huge fall i believe mm -hmm. right right Uh, so akash you mixed uh, you know uh, kind of takes on this you know some people saying that you know it may not work here and some saying that of course you know there has to be a you know they have to echo exist uh, why how do you how, how do you see this uh, i think it's a fair opportunities for the readers who would strictly want to limit themselves with just content first of all um, but you know we are the ad networks and media houses for us uh, as business owners it might not be the best solution even now uh, i mean i do see that the momentum is gaining over the uh, past few years like uh, suheb rightly said that you know um, like websites are moving towards that direction but the adaptation of uh, subscription model it's still uh, around 8 to 9% of the overall user base that we have on the websites or the web properties that are there currently live uh, so you know uh, users are actually opting uh, for both the mediums i think the momentum to have uh, more on the subscription model has now started facing up uh, in in last one or two years where i think uh, the advertiser threat is not too high because there are a lot of uh, you know other sources to deliver and make the targeting happen but i think it's more of a business decision now like how the content has to be served because i think content is not exclusive right uh, what we are serving on the subscription model is somehow uh, could be found somewhere on the other websites too so i think uh, you know uh, have deciding upon a business model like whether to retain with the subscription or with the free way and you know how to retain uh, the use current user base on the website is altogether something that need decide, needs to be decided by the media houses so i think we are moving towards that direction but not on a 100% scale maybe at a scale of 10 to 20% right right yeah. you know there's another talk uh, going on in the digital ecosystem which is about the cookie less world you know an era where you move, you move uh, and 80% of the current advertisement uh, you know is around this concept so kanti from you i want to understand uh, what proactive steps are you taking as a brand you know to address this rise of a cookie less era uh, see you know our product itself is uh, cookie proof If, if there's a word for that if you if you've seen our uh, uh, you know our website our domain we are a completely video based channel right the idea of uh, launching our channel was to give a television viewing experience on a digital platform right so we are doing exactly what a satellite channel does it's just that a satellite is there on uh, you know you, it it has its license and it's on a different platform the distribution is different we have a linear stream and we are distributing on a digital platform plus then we have a vod so it's a hybrid model so cookies are more concerning for those people who have websites which are blog driven which are article driven right so they are huge issues there for a completely video based platform like ours which is akin to any kind of a television channel it's not a concern for us at all absolutely vijesh uh... so this issue is for us basically for the news publishers like us times of india yes <laughs> so it's like uh, 80% of the inventory is used by this cookie structure so generally we do retargeting and everything we, each of our partners like networks and even our uh, google stack do the same to get the user who basically will want to that want that product so to uh, you 
can say if i want to do cookieless if in future there will be a cookieless uh, environment so we need to collect data basically we need to create our first party data through our own audience audience you can say like uh, because we have facebook pages our our facebook pages plus we need to do uh, contextual targeting to overcome this uh, issues basically you can say so uh, third party data definitely moves out of the system in some time or maybe in years but definitely we need to create our first party data to target exact audience correct segment actually right so i am so 80% is a huge number and and, and you know uh, so so give me your your story on this yeah so so if you go back to you know how this i mean the entire digital advertising started you know it was basically built on three original sins i would call <laughs> right uh, so one was you know using koki as a proxy right uh, second is you know separating audience data from media impressions so you never know you never knew where you were targeting you just blanketing your websites with ads without any without any idea right and the third was using click you know clicks as the metric now all these things right. are 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 questionable today right everything is trying to break out you know cookies are vanishing so you 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 have to replace that with something else you know maybe an identifier or maybe an email id 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 which is pli compliant or maybe a consent from a user to kind of show him ads and things like that um secondly you know audience audience data becomes becomes more uh, available because like uh, like uh, brijesh said you know publishers are have to start building their stack now and they have to get serious with their first party data try and build audiences around it you know create cohorts and uh, you know comply with you know uh, uh, maybe with google google is coming up with their own version of uh, you know targeting which is on topics right so they again moving up moving from individual to more a uh, community based or a cohort based targeting right and the thirdly of course like i said uh, clicks are going to get replaced by other metrics as like viewability viewability will come into picture there would be other metrics and so all these original sins which we have created we are trying to kind of you know break away from it and uh, over over the course of time i think publishers will gain from this because you will have an audience which is premium and you can uh, you know sell this audiences to your advertisers at a slight at a higher rate because the advertisers are not going to get or the marketers are not going to get this audiences in the free market anymore right so overall i think it's a good step and publishers uh, who are who are who are privy to this uh, would should they start building their own first party data and eventually i think it will benefit us rahul your quick thoughts uh, actually on a publisher point of view this is going to be hard for all of us because uh, we have to come with certain certain other ways uh, to target the audience uh, and for, to target the ads and all the things for example in the, in the recent uh, past we see that there are not uh, not in india partic- particularly we have seen but in the european countries this is a, a legal matter right now and they have actually introduced some european data protection laws which is not particularly implemented in india right now so we have to think of other uh, targeting like that of the email collection or some other contextual ads so but this is going to be hard it's going to be hard okay uh, yeah. akash uh, to you you uh, on this panel of course your perspective is different on this uh, one w- what does what is happening in the market according to you on this you know front and uh, what all are you seeing what are publishers doing and what is the best way for them to address this uh i think a lot of evolution is also happening on the ad network side like if i specifically talk about we just started off with programmatic serving on web and mobile devices and now we are almost serving at web amp mobile ott ctv vast and i think the serving have you know uh transformed from just programmatic to inducing pg cmp pmp direct deals all together as the delivery metric for for the end media houses or the users is the way out of uh, you know the overall sustainability of the digital advertisements on these web properties so i think uh, um, both the parties are in the evol- evolution mode where the media houses are also finding out ways to have the first party data and we as the ad networks are trying to you know uh, you know become the ad server technology and serve and induce the the overall delivery metrics in the much efficient and a transformed way so i think uh, i think it's going to be interesting uh, the time uh, 
and definitely this this you know the overall delivery is going to increase like suhey brightly said that you know when the targeting is going to be much uh, you know appropriate and more uh, aligned towards what uh, the users are there on the website the advertiser spend would also increase so i think it's both going to be more interesting and uh, you know great for in revenue opportunities as well right right you know what has also happened is that uh, the consumption if you see the interface it has shifted to mobile first you know amp based solutions and in this kind of uh, behavioral shift you know uh, kanti to you you know i want to understand that are you making uh, any active efforts to increase the retention on the desktop device and what can be done to kind of balance this uh, flow it can be an app and a desktop I don't see there is any need for doing so. We are available on all OTT platforms, and um, you want to watch us on a desktop? Go ahead. On the Fire TV, go ahead. On the Android, go ahead. On the iOS, go ahead. It really doesn't matter. At least it doesn't matter for a complete video-based platform like ours, right? right. What we've seen is when a linear stream is being watched. the analytics tells us that it's more on a desktop or more on the fire tv because it is akin to couch viewing you know it's it's similar to television viewing for example we are a sports channel let's say we are showing a match live uh, mm-hmm. the tendency is maybe start off on a mobile and then uh, they find it interesting and they so they want to have viewership in a more relaxed manner so it's called couch viewing right so you see a change in the pattern depending on the uh, timing as well what we see is let's say 9 pm onwards people are indulging in a more relaxed form of viewing so when you're doing it on a mobile you can't be watching a match on a mobile for about one and a half or two hours right so you need to be on a mobile so desktop becomes a little more relaxing your fire tv becomes a little more uh, relaxing so we just made sure that we are available on all platforms and what we see is our users keep switching from one platform to the other depending on where they are and what time of the day or the night it is so there is no great strategy in particular to retain on one platform and not to retain on the other we cool about it right perhaps it's the users discretion here uh, you know how they want to see but of course for a longer duration contest content of course i think you know they would like to shift to a bigger one um brijesh uh, uh, any thoughts on this rohil according to news publishers uh, there there is no actually any planning to get retention of the uh, desktop uh, users because uh, right now we all are fo- focusing on apps and amps because all these basically p- platforms are very fast in loading but on uh, desktop it's very slow that's why there, there is no like any plan of action for retaining the Uh, uh, desktop users right now, because there are multiple things are there. Because in mobile you you are like uh, user friendly, and the f- internet you can save the the ads get all the content is load fastly on the apps and AMP pages right now. All right, so hey, I think I pretty much echo with the panelist. Uh, I think there is no strategy as such to retain the desktop traffic because of course. uh the traffic is moving towards mobile right so that's there but sometimes you know you you as a, as a user like kanti said you know sometimes you want to lean forward or lean back right depending on 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 the time of the day on depending on your moods and right right and where you are and stuff like that so um uh, but having said that you know our our traffic is still good on on desktop you know 30% of our traffic still comes from desktop um so we try and Uh, you know try to keep the site clean and neat uh, as far as uh, u- the user experience and engagement is concerned but not uh, there is no as such no strategy to no, kind of no, it's just the way it is right yeah correct yeah. uh, rahul to you and then finally to akash okay yeah there is a certain change in the uh, for example we have earlier the website were all on the desktop and now we are switching to the mobile so most of the traffic is from mobile i believe 70 to 80% of the user in our website to come from mobile and there are certain uh, issues with the amps too actually for, for example emp does increase the speed of the website and they do uh, improve the visibility in our search engines but there is a certain flaw that our website uh, analytics and the traffic for example if a user clicks on the amp pages 
he is actually using the google servers and he is not actually coming on to our website so this is a certain con i will say that and for uh, another reason is that uh, there are the other parts of the website are left out in the amp for example ads and other important sections of the website are left out so that is a, a certain drawbacks of the amp all right okay final words akash uh so i think uh, like suhaib said you know uh, for all the big players uh, retaining the traffic on desktop is not uh, something that a chaos they are facing right but for a uh, from a broader perspective for mid level uh, pack that from for them it's a really challenging thing that uh, that we keep on hearing is because uh, the delivery rates and the you know the advertisement rates over the desktop and the mobile are completely different so uh, people who are heavily invested on just uh, devices like desktop and mobile who do, do not have um, you know the resources of having multiple uh, you know uh, delivery sources for them it is very important and efficient to have ways of retaining traffic on the desktop because uh, they get better rates of the delivery of the advertisement that is happening on the website uh, which i'm sure that's not uh, a you know a big issue for all the top players that are there in the market. market so i think definitely a lot of uh, you know i think there are a lot of products in the market that are helping publishers to also you know reengage the traffic within uh, the pages of the website um, and you know that engagement model is also improving on these mid level packs you know and the small scale publishers where uh, they are actually trying to build the traffic Uh, while also you know gaining the momentum of having uh, their properties on a multiple device level so Yeah. Right. So, Kathi, uh, uh, you know, AMP. Uh, in your view, uh, give me a sense of how do you see it in terms of impact on advertisement across the industry, and whether to opt for it or not. And a related question on the rise of OTT models. You know, how does it? How will it impact uh, the entire digital piece in the long run? See, you know. uh like i said uh, we are a complete 100% video based model so we are more concerned with things like bit compression to make sure that you know the internet user even with a lower bandwidth is able to have uh, a video viewing in a user friendly manner amp is again more for article based sites right we are only worried about how responsive it is the look and feel design and the bit compression technology so it's something you know making a video based platform a 100% video based platform is a difficult task is a difficult challenge to begin with but once you are done with it you are only then focusing on content right, uh, right. once that's made you're not focusing on the other aspects of what a typical website uh, which is which is like a e paper or or an article in a blog site does right so we don't have those worries in terms of the amp and how it's going to really impact us moving to the ott uh, uh, platform yeah i i think that that's something which is already happened if you're talking about moving from let's say print to digital uh that happened i think covid has been a catalyst we are talking about e papers now it's it's maybe nothing to do with the way the print is actually published it's to do with the viewing behavior of uh, the uh, people you want mm-hmm. to read your paper online so so ott is something which which has uh, already happened but i think ott is going to get more and more uh, specialized you see what 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 hap- what's happening now is sometimes ott also becomes a marketplace right you have entertainment you have movies you have news you have everything on uh, one platform and so uh, then uh, again uh, targeting a viewer interest on a particular platform becomes difficult when you specialize in your ott content then then and in if you can retain your content specialized then i think ott becomes a much stronger tool uh for both the publisher and the advertiser because you know the exact target group that's coming on your ott platform exact interest and there is return for your investment which is another question same question and very relevant to you uh, your quick thoughts on this uh as per kanti because they are basically video uh, they have videos but uh, as per news publishers we are focusing on amp uh 
because uh, it's like everything is moving to mobile and on the term of mobile uh, amp and apps are there so uh, amp is totally about how basically the page is loaded so uh, this fast page loading higher render rates you can say uh, higher render rates leads to the higher cpms but there is some issues right now in amp because there is some uh, implementation technology driven things are there which is not uh, right right now which is not possible right now you can say there are technologies like refresh header bidding videos is not able to basically implemented on that page properly so this is in testing phase definitely it will go live in some months or maybe but well, definitely amp is uh, next thing where basically all the news publishers definitely move but uh, as for uh, ctvs and ott my thoughts are different uh because uh, ott and ctv player uh, basically these are for video and audio uh, publishers you can say reason behind this for uh, news publishers like us it's very difficult to uh, like move from apps to ott and ctvs because there will be a issue of navigation screen size uh, uh higher bandwidth required because in normal videos user can just click on that and because the thumbnails are there but in case of news publisher there are articles which user need to basically there are multiple articles on the page and user need to navigate from one to second this will be a difficult and also the screen size a uh, screen size moving from app to tv it's difficult that's my thought about this right so hey so definitely i would recommend you know to have an amp version of your page uh, because google kind of uh, you know recommends more amp pages on the search result page um, so and i think most of it uh, bridges had covered right uh, your viewability is higher your ad cpms are much higher uh, so definitely uh, till you get your tech tech stack right uh, or your technology uh, is enabled uh, enough to kind of you know load your page within 3 or 4 seconds i think you should opt, you should opt for an amp page Uh, but i think it's very short lived uh, for the course of time i think amp amp which is will get deprecated maybe in 2 3 years time and google will start giving google will start giving preferences to their own web core vitals right so that's something which is there on the ott front um, again most of this has been covered but i am kind of excited to see you know how this kind of uh, play out plays out uh, in the education healthcare and fitness space you now those are the three niche verticals i'm seeing a lot of uh, a lot of uh, you know content being put out uh, especially for uh, kids you know for k12 kids you know where you know they want to access content and then also kind of uh, you know uh, for entertainment and as well as to get educated right so in that space i want to see uh, i'm i'm bit keen on you know seeing how this will play out and of course sports is another category uh, where uh, you know it's uh, ott is really big right there are a lot of these big 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 uh, uh, sites its distributions i mean set ott is distribution which are taking a uh, rights of all these big big tournaments and uh, you know kind of monetizing it so that's going to be an interesting space yeah. right rahul your take on this being uh, a leading regional you know in the regional space uh, how how does it resonate in, in your case well i i uh, you mean uh... about the ott or the amp pages amp yeah amp particularly yeah, yeah amp pages actually we have uh, amp pages like we have tested and tried in, in amp pages and i've seen certain uh, improvement like in the web page speed is increased like we has already been covered the web page speed is increased the, the um, it is actually content focused and it is uh, better for the user experience but i have certain uh, seen the drawbacks uh, or i can i'm not particularly say the drawbacks but there are certain issues with the amp is like uh, all the traffic is through the google service like i've already mentioned that uh, our website is getting the lower hits as compared to the amp in amp pages when we are switch we switching to the amp piece the accelerated right. mobile pages uh, our website is getting the less traffic and uh, and there is no refresh rate uh, no scripts involved in technical script involved in amp amps so we are see, we are seeing uh, ambiguity in analytics for example okay. we are not particularly sure about uh, how much the, uh, right right 
Akash, uh, from this ad ecosystem, digital ad ecosystem perspective, uh, give me a sense of these two aspects. Uh, so basically, when the websites were developed, they were developed across the devices for uh, desktop and mobile. So in 2015, Google launched AMP, saying that you know their ranking systems would improvise once the user or once the media houses adapt the technology of AMP and move their uh, you know entire setup of mobile to having more accelerated mobile pages. Right, where the user, uh, in, you know, users won't have any intrusion. The overall interface would be much fluid, and it would be it would be a much better, you know, a look and feel for the end user when they come on to the this setup. Uh, but the overall delivery was not that efficient. Over, uh, however, it is still functional, and you know, like Bridges men Bridges mentioned that you know there is still a lot of discrepancies with the ad serving regarding header bidding, regarding implementation of the advertisement and the overall delivery of the kind of revenues coming on to the, you know, normal mobile pages and to AMP. So in 2020, they launched a pilot of core web vitals where, you know, they discussed about with the publishers to uh, different ways where they can optimize their regular mobile pages and, uh, and you know, how they can make serving a little more better how the overall page load time can improvise so uh, so i think that that kind of helped them to also gain the momentum of having publishers work more on their web vitals and improvise their ranking and in 2021 i think they completely uh, you know uh, eradicated that policy that you know the ranking would be completely dependent upon the amp so now publishers are free to you know have core web vitals uh, you know efficiently designed and customized and optimized in certain way that their revenues can also, you know, uh, be stable and keep on increasing while uh, they can also make a very fluid, uh, you know, overall architecture of the website. But yeah, definitely for CTT, uh, CTV and OTT, it's definitely the next era of advertisement because the kind of impact on the delivery it creates for the advertisers is really high. And, you know, the global OTT and CTV ad volume has also increased by almost like 330% in 2021. That's kind of really huge that we have seen in the last year. And the main reason about uh, the entire this delivery is high viewability of the overall you know ads that are being delivered on these platforms so i think uh, it's 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 going to be even more further interesting uh, in the coming years and even in 2022 absolutely and this brings me to my final question i request everyone to stick to 1 minute we have around 8 minutes uh, kanti to you um, you know, how do you see user adaptability? We have seen it, you know, over the years, but how does, how will it pan out from here on? Also, you lot is this buzz around this metaverse. So how do you see the user adaptability pan out as we move on from here? See, when you talk about user adaptability, you're talking about digital adaptability. I think that is what oh, the past two years has taught us that that was what life was. You know, during the COVID pandemic, even the most non-digital user was forced to become a, a digital user, right? So user adaptability to a digital platform is something which is, you can say, which has already happened uh, in India. It's just, and you know, where you have behavior formulated in 21 days where we had two years for us to get formulated. So I don't think that's going to go easily. When you talk about metaverse, to me, uh, I can correlate it to the virtual world and coming from a sports platform, I would think of fantasy gaming as, as my metaverse, right? Now, it's a huge market uh, globally and in India, but what is lacking terribly at the moment uh, in, this, in this world is the legality game of luck game of chance nobody knows right we need strong legal laws to exactly tell us what is on the right side what is on the wrong side only then your entire metaverse for the sporting platform is going to become right. robust at the moment it's blur absolutely i totally Brijesh? um adapting uh, user adaptivity is totally about uh, like uh, in terms of programmatic programmatic it's like user definitely is moving from uh, it's like earlier when in 2019 uh, videos and ads are not so much in the market so video you can say the video uh, integration centers video uh, see viewability are less but in last two years definitely as per Kanti everyone was at home and everyone is moving to 
digital and everyone is watching videos and and you can say reading out articles most of the like 70 to 80 percent users are go to a uh, digital like most of the guys are uh, reading news on mobile uh, rather than on uh, pre- uh, uh, newspapers so yeah definitely uh, users are moving to uh, digital part regarding metaverse it's a three dimensional you can say a virtual space where user is engaging uh, uh, with uh, other ones and the, right kanti was correctly right uh, it's like legal terms definitely is there otherwise it will be like how which is what is right what is wrong nobody knows in terms of metaverse absolutely i think regulations of course will play right. a huge role here most important part. Part. yes so hey yeah so user adaptability of course has, i mean has, has uh, accelerated by about 5 years right you got once for 5 years now i mean uh like the rest of the panel said uh, the transition has become even more faster now people have started consuming everything online um so of course that 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 has accelerated and that's that's going to i mean that's going to gain more momentum as we go right today we have about the 350 million users uh in india just consuming content online right whether it's through ott or through other platforms so that's one thing on the meta was uh, extremely positive uh, i think that, like like others other panelists said there is a lot of opportunity there not just in uh, within the sporting the sporting or the, or the gaming community but of, of even otherwise right what is metaverse it's, it's it's an extension of your lives which is enhanced by some technology right so virtually we are doing meetings virtually we are conducting a lot of events right tomorrow uh, there was a virtual marriage in fact in 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 chennai which happened last last month. and there are virtual holy parties also happening correct absolutely so that's 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 something which is uh, which is the first step towards metaverse and i think things will get more interesting where uh, the virtual and the physical world will kind of merge yeah round to you metaverse of course i want to touch upon the, this because you know print to digital even is a story still in the regional you know uh, what you call parts uh, how will it pan out yes, in your this definitely is a big yes so how is it going to pan out Okay, so how is it? How is it going to pan out? The shift yeah, to digital definitely media? digital shifting to digital media is a, a big concern for all us. For example, earlier we were just a newspaper in the print form, and next we have to move to the website, then e-paper, then to the mobile apps, and now we have seen the social media presence. For example, we you have to be present on all the social media platforms to show to be. on the in touch with the user because not all the users are using your apps and uh, the website they are, but they are u- continuously following you on the digital media space right. while, while i see in the advertisement kind of sphere i see there uh, for example the local ads in local ads i will say the print media is more effective for example a user print ads can have a localized presence for example if i have to launch a particular local event then i have to go with the print ads but uh, definitely we are going going faster towards the digital transformation all right all right a final question to you akash uh, on your thoughts as far as this digital ecosystem is concerned on user adaptability of course it has uh, had firm roots in the last two years especially uh you how does it pan out from here on and what does metaverse uh, what kind of opportunities arise out of this uh, <clears throat> so i think the revolution had to come and covid-19 just amplified the overall process of the transformation and the adoption for i think uh, the masses um but as the consumption of the content has increased over time and you know simultaneously the delivery opportunities have also increased and we ourselves are also working as the extension for sales for these publishers uh i think it's going to be even more uh, enriching experience both for the users and the advertisers in the coming time uh for meta metaverse i think it's it's legitimate i think we are currently at just the start of that era i mean how cool is it to be a part of the organization visiting offices virtually traveling places and what not 
but i think it's a long way ahead it's it, this thing has all just started but one thing is for sure that since hnn has marketed themselves into metaverse the scope of the entire advertisement and delivery is you know comparatively much higher because the entire metaverse is digital so all the consumers who are coming onto the platform or visiting that are the targeted audience so i think right. uh, in that way it looks really uh, you know um, it looks very uplifting for the coming time thank you uh, thank you everyone for joining us today a uh, lot of takeaways here and uh, what a great insightful uh, you know points that everyone has made i want to thank all of you for taking out time to this afternoon and joining us and we hope to continue these conversations uh, as we move on thanks once again for joining us thanks for thank you thank you Thank you.